Hi, this is Laura Slominski at Edina High School, and today we are going to be doing the notes for section 10.3 called Holes and Asymptotes. The objective is I can identify holes and vertical asymptotes in rational functions. So in sections 10.1 and 10.2, in both sections we looked at look, um, how to graph the function 1 over x, and what happens if we change it to a over x, so if that top number changes, if it becomes negative, and also shifting it left and right. So just as a reminder, um, we said that f of x equals a over x begins as this graph with a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. Um, we said that if a is negative, it switches to quadrants two and four. If a is, pos is, if a is greater than one, um, or bigger than one, it gets stretched from the asymptotes, and if a is between 0 and 1, it condenses towards the asymptotes. And then our rules of shifting stay the same. If something's grouped with x in the denominator, it'll shift it left or right, the opposite of what you would think, and if it's after the fraction, um, the plus k part, then it shifts it up or down. The reason I say that is because today we are going to um, find potential vertical asymptotes um, that would affect this graph, and also we're going to talk about these holes that could happen in the graph. In order to do this, we're going to do a step-by-step -step function at first, and for a rational expression we're going to start looking at is more like this. So you can see they're getting more complex. And the first thing we want to do is factor the numerator and the denominator. So when I look at the numerator, I have 2x minus 2, and remember when we factored, the first thing we look for is the GCF. And I notice that this one has a 2 in common, so it's 2 times x minus 1. So the numerator can factor as 2 times x minus 1. Um, the denominator, because I look at it and I see that it's x squared plus 2x minus 3, I look for a GCF. It doesn't have one, but it is quadratic. So in this situation, I use the x box method to factor the denominator. Hopefully we're getting more and more comfortable with that. Remember, ax squared goes in the top, c goes in the bottom, it's a negative 3. When I put that in my x, I multiply across the diagonal, I get negative 3x squared. On the bottom, I put the 2x. And remember, my job is to find two things that multiply to get to the top and add to get to the bottom. Well, because the top's negative, I know I need a positive and negative. The bottom's positive, so I know I need to use 3 and 1. Um, but I'm going to use a positive 3 and then negative 1 because that adds to positive 2. So I use positive 3, negative 1. When I get those sides, it goes along the other diagonal. And now I factor out the greatest common factor of every row and column. So the first column is x. The second column, because it's next touching a box that has a negative, it's a negative 1. Uh, this one is x. And then because this one's touching a positive, it's a positive 3. So I can factor my denominator as x minus 1 times x plus 3. <clears throat> so again, this is the denominator right here, x minus 1 times x plus 3. It says since division by 0 is not defined, we need to find all values that would make the denominator equal to 0. So in this blank, we're just going to put what we got as factored form, x minus 1 times x plus 3. But again, it's not defined where x is 0. So we're going to set each of those factors we found equal to 0. And we're solving. So in this case, I'd add 1 to both sides. So x is 1 and x is negative 3. Those are the things where this graph would be undefined. What that means is x can't be negative 1 or oh, positive 1, sorry, or negative 3. And now for the rest of the lesson, we're going to learn what that means and how it changes the graph that we talked about in the beginning. Okay, so you can see the next part's kind of done for you. Um, this is factored form. Remember, we found that the numerator was 2 times x minus 1. That's what they put here. The denominator factored as x minus 1 times x plus 3. So you can see in this situation that we crossed out the x minus 1 because everything was multiplied and there was an x minus 1 on top and bottom. So that's called simplifying the fraction, um, or actually we're just reducing it. But again, you're dividing out the factors that are the same on the top and the bottom. And if a factor 
actually cancels out to simplify the fraction, the x that would make it 0 is going to be called a place where there's a hole in the graph. So since we crossed out x minus 1, x equals 1 is considered a hole of the graph. And then the second part says, except for the whole, the graph looks exactly like the simplified rational function 2 over x plus 3. So that's what we kind of reviewed at the beginning here. Um, and again, so now because we know the x plus 3 is with the x in the bottom, I just know from what we've done in the past that that's going to shift to 3 left, which means that vertical asymptote that was at 0 moves to x equals negative 3. And again, we can see that that was the zero we found of the other factor on the bottom. And because it was a zero in the dot, so that is going to be the vertical asymptote because it was a zero in the denominator that didn't divide out. So the key for today is when you're given one of these rational expressions, you are first going to factor the top and the bottom. You are going to cancel out whatever factors you can, and the factors that cancel will give you the holes. So you find the zero of those factors that cancel out, and that is a hole on the graph, and we'll talk about what that means. Um, and then the one that's left will tell you where the vertical asymptote is. So again, I'm going to show you on this one, you don't really need to know it. You're not going to have to be able to graph it. But for this one we just did, so you're just going to have to identify the holes. You don't actually have to graph them. But we said the vertical asymptote moves to negative 3. It didn't shift up or down, so that means that negative 2... Oh, that's not true. Um, it didn't shift up or down, so I still have my, my horizontal asymptote at 0. It's not negative, so it stays in the upper quadrant. The biggest thing is that at 1, where this graph comes down, so when it gets to x equals 1, there would actually just be a hole in the graph. I kind of showed it there. Again, we're not going to ask you to graph these, but I did want to show you that this is what a hole would look like. It's literally, it pauses for a second, there's a hole in the, um, in the curve, and then it keeps going. Okay, so let's look at some more examples. So we're going to try these. Number one says factor out. Now, again, we have to be able to factor the top. We have x squared minus 9. It's like plus 0x minus 9 if you want to use the Xbox method. Okay. So once again, I would have, oops, I should do my box first, x squared, negative 9, which is negative 9x, and 0x, so I need a positive 3x and a negative 3x. Some of you don't need to use the Xbox method on some problems like this anymore, um, but I am just going to show you how this works. Okay, so this does factor as x plus 3 over x minus 3. And then the bottom was just x plus 3, so I don't need to do anything to simplify that. Okay? So when it says, I find the whole possible holes and asymptotes. So the only denominator is x plus 3. And so if I set that equal to 0, I get x equals negative 3. So there's only one possible hole or asymptote in this case. And then I finally just have to decide if it's a hole or an asymptote. When I look at the function, again, I see that the x plus 3 on top and bottom cancels. And as soon as it cancels, that x minus 3 is a whole because it divides away or it cancels up. Okay? So really, this is the lesson for today. We just have to be really good at our factoring and identifying if things cancel. And if they do, then it's a whole. If they don't, and whatever's left, the zeros at the bottom are asymptotes. So this next one, um, the top numerator, I see that 2x plus 4 has a GCF of 2, so it's 2 times x plus 2. They're having me rewrite it over here. So I'll do my work on the left and then copy it down on the right. Um, the denominator is x squared plus 5x plus 6. Again, if I want to use the Xbox method, you do not have to if you have a more efficient method now. Um, 6x squared, 5x, and then in this case I need 3x and 2x. So I get x plus 2, x plus 3. So that is the bottom. Again, the, 
the possible holes and asymptotes are the zeros at the bottom. So x plus 2, the, the zero, the thing that would make that zero is a negative 2. x plus 3, that would be a negative 3. And now once I know the two things that would make this graph undefined because they're zeros in the denominator, which would make it undefined um, because I'd be dividing by zero, I see that the x plus 2 on top and bottom cancels out which by default means then that negative 2 is a whole, or one that cancels out as a whole, because it divides away. I would either say that, or I would say because it cancels out. And then finally, x minus 3 is going to be a vertical asymptote, because it was still there, after you cancel. Okay, so again, that's really the lesson. There's just four more examples on the next side. We'll just keep uh, plugging our way through. I'm not sure we'll get through all of them. I'm actually going to skip showing the Xbox method. In this first one, when I factored, I got x minus 3 times x plus 1. So at this time, I would pause it and try these four and then check your work. Got x minus 3 times x minus 4. Okay, so I know x can equal 3, x can equal 4, and then I recognize x minus 3 cancels. So I just say that there is a hole at x equals 3 and a vertical asymptote at x equals 4. And so for these ones, that's all I'm looking for. Okay, we're just going to find the holes and vertical asymptotes. In this one, the numerator has a factor, the greatest common factor of 3, times x minus 3. On the bottom, I get x minus 1 times x minus 3 when I factored using the Xbox method. And again, this tells me I need to identify what happens at x equals 1 and what happens at x equals 3, because those two things would make this undefined. Figure out which ones cancel, and because x minus 3 cancels, there will be a hole at x equals 3 and a vertical asymptote at what's left, which would be x equals 1. Um, finally, number 5, the top doesn't factor at all. The bottom just has a GCF of x, so I get x minus 3. And what I like about this one is that it adds a new twist. Remember, we do have two factors here. We have the x, which means x is 0, and x equals 3. So even though we didn't have to factor using the Xbox, so an entire factor didn't factor out, um, it's important to recognize that in this case, these x's cancel, which means there's a hole at x equals 0. And then the vertical asymptote is at x equals 3. And last but not least, this last one just shows us that sometimes you have to factor the top and bottom using the Xbox method. So the first one, again, would be like x squared plus 0, x minus 1. So it did factor as x plus 1 times x minus 1. And then the denominator had an a value greater than 1. But when we use the Xbox method, that doesn't really affect us too much. I got it to be x plus 1 times 2x plus 3. Okay, so I get x can't be negative 1. And then the 2x plus 3, I just want to show you that we can still solve that. I get 2x equals negative 3 divided by 2. So x equals negative 3 halves. Something happens there. So I just wanted to show you that it is okay to get a fraction. Um, as one of these things, the x plus 1 cancels out. So there is a hole at x equals negative 1. And then the 2x plus 3 is still there, so that means the vertical asymptote is at x equals negative 3 halves. So again, sometimes the factoring, um, if that a value is different, you may end up with an asymptote at a fraction, and that's okay. So there you go. Today's lesson, take a rational expression, be able to factor the top and bottom, figure out what would cause it to be undefined, which is the zeros of the denominator, and then those zeros are either going to identify a whole or vertical asymptote. The ones that cancel become holes, and the ones that are left become vertical asymptotes. Have a good day.